Welcome back. Some of you will remember back when I was first started working on my end games, I bought a couple of end game books, and one was 100 end games that you must know or you should know or something like that. And I got to a point about 30 or 40 pages in where it said something about the Philidor position and then just acted like I should know that and said, well, of course, this diagram can't be solved this way because the defender can't reach the Philidor position. And then it just went on. And it didn't say anything about what the Philidor position was or anything. And I, I flipped through several more pages and nope, nothing. You just had to already know before getting the book that teaches me about endgames, what the Philidor position was. So I decided to look it up. And like many of my chess activities, I decided to hit record. So I'm going to try to learn about the Philidor position. And there might be some other related things we will learn here. And maybe you can get some use from this too. Okay, uh, Wikipedia has an article on the Philidor position. You probably can't read this on your screen, but I will just tell you that it says it's a chess endgame involving a drawing technique for the defending side in a rook and pawn versus rook endgame. And if I scroll just a little bit, maybe you will be able to see the graph here uh, right above my camera view, and you will see that black has a king and a rook and a pawn, whereas white just has a king and a rook. And then over here on the left, it says the diagram shows an example of Philidor's position, or also called the Philidor position. The important characteristics of the position are, from the point of view of the defender, the defending king, which in this case is white, is on the queening square of the pawn. So you see the black's pawn on the little graph, and I'm going to show this on a bigger board in just a second and try to work my way through it. So if you can't see this very well, that's okay. But the first point is that the defending king is on the square that that pawn needs to get to promote, number one. Uh, oh, the pawn can be on any file. That's not a separate point. That's just on the same line. So in the Philidor position, or Philidor's position, it doesn't matter which file the pawn is on. As long as the king, the defending king, is directly in front of it on the square that that pawn needs to promote on. Number two, the opposing pawn has not yet reached the defender's third rank. Okay, so in the little diagram, the, the pawn is on the defender's fourth rank. And since we're playing with the white pieces, that's rank three and rank four. If you're playing with the black pieces, uh, it, the numbers would be different, but basically that there has to be at least two empty squares between the pawn and the king. Uh, and our king, the defending king, is directly in front of the pawn with at least two empty squares between them. Number three, the opposing king is beyond the defender's third rank. Okay, so the same as the pawn. So the defender's, the sorry, the attacker's king, the king that's matching the pawn, has to be at least as far back as the pawn. It can't be closer than that. And number four, the defender's rook, that's our rook, is on the third rank, which prevents that king from getting closer. Okay, in that little diagram, I see that our rook, the white rook, is on the third rank off to the left so that king can't advance. Uh, okay, so that's what it requires for there to be a Philidor's position. And I don't know why it says that this involving a drawing technique, it doesn't say it's a draw, it just says it involves a drawing technique for the defending side. Okay. Now, it also says that this position was come up with in 1777, so a long time ago. Many rook and pawn versus rook endgames reach either the drawn Philidor position or the winning Lucena position. The Lucena position has also been mentioned in a couple of endgame books that I've seen without any explanation. You're already supposed to know this by the time you get the endgame book. Okay, so the defending side should try to reach the Philidor position. Okay, so if your opponent has a pawn and a rook, and you just have a rook, then you try to reach the Philidor position. But if you're the side that has that extra pawn, then you should try to reach the Lucena position. Now, Grandmaster Jesus de la Villa, who wrote the book that I was talking about, said <clears throat> that the Lucena and Philidor positions are the most important positions in this type of endgame and in endgame theory. Okay, now I already opened in another tab the Lucena position, 
which is slightly different, as you can see from this graph. In this one, both players have a rook and a king, and one has a pawn, but this one is winning for the side that has the pawn. Okay, it says it's one of the most famous and important positions in chess endgame theory. Um, Karsten Muller, whoever that is, said that it may be the most important position in endgame theory. Okay, so we need to know this. It is fundamental in the rook and pawn versus rook endgame. If the side with the pawn can reach this type of position, they can forcibly win the game. Okay, so we have two opposing things, and that's why I've included them both in this video, because right before I started, I saw that the introduction to both of these Wikipedia articles referred to the other one, and basically saying if there's a rook and rook endgame where one side has a pawn and the other side doesn't, that you're going to you need to get to one of these two positions and the side without the pawn should try for the philidor position which is you can draw and the side with the pawn should try to reach the lucena position which is a win um okay so this one has a couple of characteristics uh the, if you remember on the philidor position there were four characteristics and on the lucena position it lists five characteristics the pawn is any pawn except a rook pawn so not the A pawn, not the H pawn, but any of the others. So that's different than Philidor. Philidor said it could be any file. The pawn can be on any file. So if you have an A file, if you have an A pawn or an H pawn, then you can't reach the Lucena position, but you could reach the Philidor position. Okay, so that's one difference between them. Now, the, another difference is the second point here of Lucena. The pawn has advanced to the seventh rank. So the little diagram that's up there, uh, that the side with the pawn is just about to promote. Whereas in the other one, the pawn was still still had three squares to go. And the attacking king, that's the king matching the pawn, is on the queening square of its own pawn. Okay, so that's another difference between the two positions. In the Philidor position, the defending king was on the square where the pawn had to promote. But in the Lucena position, the king that uh, is attacking, the one with the pawn, is on that square. And the pawn is right next to it, as you can see in the tiny little diagram up there. Okay, fourth characteristic. And the attacking rook cuts off the opposing king from the pawn by at least one file. Okay, so we see here this white rook is cutting off the black king from getting any closer to our pawn. And the defending rook is the is on the file on the other side of the pawn. Okay, the little black rook over here. So that's several differences between these positions. Obviously, when it says you should try to get to one of these positions we're talking about earlier in the game, when it's becoming apparent that you're going to get into an end game where you each have a rook and only one of you has a pawn, if you're not the one with the pawn, you try to get into the Philidor position, which means you gotta get your king ahead of that pawn and right in front of it before it gets any closer and you have to have a, your rook cutting off the other king. But if you're the side with the pawn, you want to get into the Lucena position, which has, so you, ha, you wanna get your own king in front of your pawn and all the way down there and your pawn wedged up against it and your rook cutting off the opponent's king from getting there. Okay, well, let's take this over to the board editor or the analysis board on Lee Chess and take a look. Okay, we are now on the board editor on Lee Chess, and I'm sorry it's not cropped correctly, but that's okay. I'm not going to stay here very long. It says set the board. I'm just going to guess that these positions are already listed here under end game positions. And I know you can't see this drop down list, but it's there, I promise. There is the pawn endings where's the dra draw uh, let's see pawn bunch of different pawn endings are we going to see the ones that are named this position uh okay it's not named philidor or lucena so i'm just going to have to set the board let's clear the board by pressing the clear board button and then we will drag the king and uh kings and rooks onto those positions so let's put the let's say we've got our king and our pawn coming down and I 
don't remember where exactly the rook had to be. I remember that the black rook had to be on the third, the defender's third rank, cutting off our king from coming closer, and the defender's king had to be directly in front of our pawn. Where did the rook have to be in the Philidor position? The rook had to, the other rook had to be, well, it didn't have to be there. It just, I think it just had to be on the other side. So let's, uh, so our white rook then, it was over here in that position. Okay. And I, I don't know if it matters whose turn it is. So we're going to try it both ways. We're going to click, uh, we're going to try it with white to play first and uh, go to the analysis board. Okay. And I will crop this more correctly. Okay. I have cropped this analysis board and turned on Stockfish. And it does indeed say that it's a draw position, even with white to move. And it says that white's best move is rook to g7. Well, it, one of several moves that draws for white. One is rook to g7, one is rook to b7, and even rook to a8 check. I think most people here would probably play check, certainly at my level, because and we don't know that this is the Philidor position, so we have no idea that it's a drawn endgame, that black can draw this game. So we're probably going to check. We can't move our king forward, because as the uh, position description talked about, the defender's rook is keeping our king from moving forward. I don't know why we wouldn't move the pawn forward, and maybe we'll find that out. Um... But it says if we check, what what is... Uh... Okay, here the defender only has two moves. If they go to d7, all of a sudden white has a huge advantage. If they go to f7, it's still drawn. Or if they go forward directly to e7, directly in front of the pawn, it's still drawn. So let's say because... We remember from our just king and pawn in games that we, we want to keep our king in front of the pawn if at all possible. So let's say the defender moves there. And then what's white going to do? Are they, why wouldn't they check it? Oh, if they check again, they just go back and forth and then it's a draw. So we know that. So, okay, so what should... It says the rook to, all the way back to a1 or b8 or a7 check and all of those are zero plus one according to the stockfish here on Lee Chess. I have no idea what any of what that would do and I have no idea why you would want to come all the way back here. But let's just say that we did the, the top one then what black just goes back right? Okay so black would just move back. Okay and let's say they took this back to the original position and then now it's black to move. This was the position that we started off in. So if we started off in this position and it's black's turn, what does black do? It's because black can't come forward because the rook cuts off all those squares, the white rook. Black's king can only go left or right. And the it says if you move the rook, it needs to go to either g6 or b6. So if, if you're the defending side on this, playing with the black pieces, you want to keep your, your rook on this rank here, which keeps this king from coming forward. So here, because you don't want to go to that square where the pawn can get it, or where the king can get it, or the king, or the king, or the rook. So that leaves you only two squares for the rook to go to. That makes sense. Okay, if you move your king, it says it's okay to move your king to d8. What would happen if you moved your king, if the defender moved the king to d8? They could still check, right? Like we saw in the beginning. So they they check. And then you could go to E7 or C7, but not D7 again. For some reason, if you get in front of White's king, you're in trouble. It gives White an advantage. Well, let's say E7 because we do want to stay in front of that pawn. Okay, and then here again... It's uh, Stockfish suggests that this rook can go here or, or check. Okay, so there's really nothing that white can do at this point. But let's say this, and, and black's king goes back to where it was. And now this is the original position, the Philidor position. What if white moves their pawn? That's the question I had at the beginning, because it was saying you could do your rook here or there or back here. Well, what if white moves the pawn? Then what happens? Then what does black do? 
because now black doesn't have the option of taking the rook across this way it says now you want to bring your rook back h2 or h1 my guess is that it, it the reason that it's not any of those is because you want to get behind this king and if you move to one of those squares you you can't come over and get behind that king so let's say h2 well let's say h1 it's the furthest that's one of the two moves that draws here now what's white going to do they've already pushed this pawn forward one time it said they can go the king away from their pawn or they can check here or they could just move their rook over one now if they just move their rook over one stockfish says we're going to check them okay well why wouldn't my question now is why wouldn't they just move the pawn forward again now that they've got their rook here protecting it what would happen if they moved the pawn forward oh it says we would go here willing to give up our rook for the pawn wait really if we did that wouldn't they bring their king it says they could and then what do we do it says we would go there <laughs> I'm not sure about this. Not sure at all. Oh, we could also check here, and that would still be drawing. Or what? We can even check here, and that's still a draw? I'm going to do it. It says we can check here, and that's still a draw. Because the king would take it. But what if the king didn't take it? I assume they would, but what? But how is that still drawing? Oh, because we don't have any legal moves. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Wow. Okay, so that was the Philidor position. Which we read, and now I've recropped the page, so you, the Wikipedia article isn't showing up quite the same as it was before. But the Philidor position is the one in which... Uh, as we read from the description, the defending king is on the promotion square of the pawn. There's still at least two squares between that king and the pawn. The pawn hasn't got there yet. Uh, the king is also, the other king, is at least that far away. Our rook is keeping their king from getting closer, and their rook is on the other side. And, that, and in this case, it could, the pawn can be on any file. That's going to work even if the pawns are on the edge. So back to the analysis board, this position here... But again, this position can be moved around with the board editor, which also is not cropped correctly now. And so as long as our rook is on this file, I mean, on this rank someplace, keeping the enemy king from coming closer, and as long as, as long as this king and pawn aren't any closer than that, and as long as the defender's king is on the square that this pawn needs to be on to promote, then black can draw. But as we saw, there were a couple of places where black had losing moves, so they would have to know that. Uh, for example, when, when white checked here, if black moved in front of the other king, then all of a sudden it was really losing. Because now, what says now we could play e6 check. Wait, couldn't... Why, could, why couldn't they attack here why couldn't the defender take this pawn now now it says white has mate in seven if they oh because we have to leave the defense of the rook and go to the back rank and then they're going to take our rook okay so we can't do that so we can move in front of the pawn Oh, but that get no that gives white an advantage again what should we okay so the mistake then was moving in front of the king and then they could check us with this pawn if we take the pawn they get here we have to go back and then the king wins the pawn so here no matter what we do they're then going to check us 
Why couldn't we come up this way? To F6. Oh, then they can check us here. And now, and now we can't we can't get in front of the pawn anymore to stop promotion. Somehow it worked out that way. If we back up a few moves, that when they checked us down here, if we we have to go forward, so that if they do move the pawn, it's not a check. We can't go here where when they move the pawn, it's a check for some reason. Okay. So that's fascinating. And it's a, if they checked us again, we would just go back. And so then they wouldn't check us again. They're just going to go to C7 or G7 or B7, and it's going to draw. Wow. Okay. I'm going to go back to the board editor and try to find the other position, the Lucena position. Okay. I didn't find these positions pre-made in the drop-down list on the board editor, though there are lots of end games listed there if this one was listed there it wasn't by the by these names there wasn't one called the philidor position or the lucena position there might have been one of like rook and pawn endings that were these positions but i didn't check all of those i didn't want to waste my time or yours but i i made this position manually on the board editor using the description found on the lucena position page where it said what the uh, the rules were the pawn is any pawn except a rook pawn the pawn has advanced to the seventh rank. The attacking king, the, that's the one with the pawn, is on the queening square, or the promotion square of its pawn. The attacking rook cuts off the opposing king from the pawn by at least one file, and the defending rook is on the other side of the pawn. So that's what we did. We've advanced this pawn to the seventh rank with our king in front of it. Our rook cuts off the opponent, opposing king, and their rook is on the other side. And sure enough, when I turn on Stockfish, it says white has a, a plus six advantage, 6.3. Okay. Well, that makes sense because this pawn's very close to promoting. Uh, and we do know from other videos that we've made that if the two rooks were taken off the board at this point, we know that white's going to win this. Um, we know that because white, we got our king in front of this pawn and there's no way, no matter whose turn it is, there's no way for this king to get closer. If it's black's turn, well, they can't go there or there right now at all. And no matter where they go, we can just move to the side and promote the pawn on the next turn. We, we tried that in depth in a couple of earlier videos, I don't know, a month or two ago, maybe about a month. The only thing where black could force the draw or the defending side could force the draw is if our king was behind our pawn and their king managed to get in front of it if their king was in front of this pawn then they could force the draw because we couldn't get their king out of there and we ended up in a position where they could either take the pawn or we left them no legal move or there was a repetition but because our king's in front of the pawn and again we're talking about an end game with where the rooks aren't there just the kings and that one pawn we already know that one's drawing and one's winning for the side with the pawn but this is just like that except we've added rooks and it makes a huge difference that the defender allowed the pawn to get this far and it also according to the rules on the wikipedia page it makes a huge difference that our rook is keeping their king from getting closer now in this case their king can't get closer anyway because even even without our rook here our, our king guards those two squares right now so it's white's move the way i set this up so what is white gonna do right now white would put their rook right down here which would force their king away somewhere okay that makes sense and then once they do let's see they're going to want to go here because if they go there we can bring our king out and then be ready to promote our pawn so they're going to want to go here to keep our king from coming this way and our king can't go that way so what's our next move it says we would check them here but then aren't they going to go back stockfish is still saying we have a huge advantage if we check them there 
is this going to be like that other video where I was doing a puzzle and Stockfish just said to repeat moves? You can't win if you repeat moves. We know that. That's in the rules of chess. So Stockfish needs to learn the rules of chess. Rook to d5, it says. Well, that's here. Now it's Black's turn. So we checked them, and now we came back. What did that accomplish? Now we're in a Lucena position again. It's their turn. They have to do something. What if they go here? It says they're gonna, if they go there, we should just check them. Okay, let's do that. They're going to go back. I'm trying to learn something, and it's difficult to learn something when Stockfish isn't cooperating. Okay, now it is not suggesting to check here. Now it's saying to go back to D5. Or D2 even, but D5 has a slightly higher rating for some reason. D6 and D5 have a slightly higher rating than D2. Slightly higher, more powerful evaluation. Well, let's just say we went to D6. Aren't they going to do this? And now it's our turn again. D5. Okay. Now they're not going to move their king back? Well, it says they could move their king closer to us. But wait, if they did that, wouldn't we? No, then they would take our rook. But then we would promote. Well, let's just say they did that. That's now listed as their top move. Okay, so we would run away? It says rook to a5. Well, then that's not a Lucena position anymore, is it? Because the Lucena position... Uh, had our rook cutting off this king. Well, now... It says black's best move is rook to b4. My question is... That's what it says. I, I don't even know what, how to formulate my question. Okay. So let's say they did that. Now, do we bring our king out so we can get out of the way of that dang pawn? Because we can't promote the pawn as long as our king's in front of it. Uh, the top three moves say no. I don't know. Let's just do it. It still says we have a huge advantage, even though they can check us. And that's by far their best move, which I would assume so. So let's say they check us. Now, do we get away so... It says king to c8 is actually our best move, but king to e8 is equal. And white still has a huge advantage, but I don't know how those two can be the same. One of them is going back to where we just were, blocking our pawn, and the other one is getting out of the way of the pawn and preventing them from checking us on the next turn. So I'm going to do that one. They can't check us now. I mean, they can legally check us here, but they don't want to because we will promote at that point. Pretty sure. Okay. Wait. If they checked us there and we took it with promotion, wouldn't that be a stalemate? Because our queen would be cutting off all these squares and our rook would be cutting off all of those. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's as if we take there with promotion, we need to promote to a rook or a knight. Because if we promoted to a queen, that's a stalemate. Oh, wow. See, I would probably have an opponent do that, and it would trick me, and I would lose. Yeah. I did not mean to go back that far. I meant to go back a little bit, just a few moves... Okay, yeah, because we, we wanted to move over here, and then what would they do? It says, see, oh, to get behind the pawn, that makes sense. Okay, so let's say they got behind the pawn. Well, it says then we would move to protect it, but then wouldn't they check us again? This one isn't as obviously winning to me as the other one was drawing. The first position that we looked at in the first half of this video was the Philidor position in which the defending side, the side without the pawn, could draw it with careful play. And that one looked like it made sense. There just wasn't anything that the side with the pawn could do if we played it just right. 
But this one, I'm trying to promote that pawn. I'm trying to win and I can't find it. And the stockfish keeps saying, oh, you're plus 49. You've smoked them. They should resign now. The, the plus 49, you should resign, right? You sh I mean, I've got people in the forums every day in various websites saying if you're, you know, plus seven, then the other side should resign. It's plus 49. Okay, so I've got to protect the pawn. I can protect the pawn by check, rook to a6 check. And that's actually my top move. I can protect the pawn by moving here, in which case we will repeat because they just checked me there. Or I could protect the pawn by putting a rook on it. But then I can't promote it. Okay. So let's say I protect the pawn with check. That's something we haven't tried yet. That was really great, Stockfish says. And I know that their king can't come toward our king. And obviously it can't stay on the file where it is. So it's got three choices. That's the only legal moves besides this not very smart one. Okay. So when it says all of those are plus 48.9. So it doesn't matter. E5, D5, F5. Well, let's... Let's pick the one closest to the pawn. Okay, so now, oh, now we can come back and they can't check us again. Okay, I get that. So back up one. What if it didn't block that check? What if it just came here? Now we can, it says we can protect the pawn with king to d8 or king, whoops, wow, king to d7 or rook to a7. But I know that if we go to one of these two squares with our king, d7 or d8, they're going to check us. So they're going to check us. But it says even if they don't, it's still plus 49. Even if they take the pawn now. Oh, okay, obviously if they take the pawn, it's plus 49. Because we'll take the rook and then now we know how to win a king and a rook endgame because I made a video on that. We know that. If you don't know that, I have a video on how to win with just a king and a rook versus a king. You can do it. All right, but I know that most of you do know that already. So I don't know why they would do that because that's obviously losing, but why would a check be losing here? We're gonna go this way now, okay? Then wouldn't they go back to hit our pawn again? And it says we should go here. So how do we get the pawn promoted if they can keep checking us and keeping us away from the pawn? D7 or D8, doesn't matter. Okay, they're gonna check again. It says, I know it says E7 is the top move, but we know that repetition is a draw. So somebody, before this video gets any longer, <laughs> uh, Go back in time and tell me right now how to win this with white. We can come in front of our pawn this way, it says. Okay, so let's say we did that and they check us again. Now what? If we come forward, they take the pawn, right? So now we go here. I feel like we made a little part, but they're going to check us again. Now we can block with the rook. Okay. Okay. That's why we put, okay, that's why we put the rook over there so our king should have gotten over there in the first place so they could block the check with the rook because now what do they do? Okay, now if they take the rook, well, obviously we take back and this king can't get in front of that pawn fast enough. Well, it can't go there, you know what I mean. It can't get there before our king, after taking their rook, can, can come back. So they would go here and then we promote, right? Oh, I would. It says it doesn't matter if we do or not. It doesn't matter if we promote or not. But now they're going to have to give up their rook for it. Because now when we promote, if they don't take our queen, then it's mate really quick. And if they do take our queen, then it takes a little longer. So they're going to take our queen. We're going to take back. Wait, it's... Oh... <laughs> Stockfish, look at that. You don't have to take back just yet. Go ahead and check them. Just go ahead and check first if you want. It's okay. 
Just don't do anything else because then that's a draw. Either take or check. Okay, so we'll take it. And now we know how to win that. Okay, but that was really dicey. So to me, as a, uh, I guess a novice, I, you can't really call me a beginner anymore because for more than a year I have been studying tactics and openings and and end games. To me, a beginner is someone who, who barely knows how the pieces move. And I know that to somebody like Magnus Carlsen or Hikaru or somebody, I yeah, I barely know how the pieces move. But um, but I, I can't think of myself as a beginner given the long list of things that I've learned. But to me, the Lucena position and the Philidor position uh, are fairly complicated, but I think we worked our way through it. Uh, again, the Lucena position was more difficult for me, for the way that I think. And maybe I should have flipped the board. Maybe that would have helped me see it in a better light. Um, and that's something that I can try in the future. The Philidor position was easier once I ran through it on the board. Once I saw that if they advance that pawn, they're going to end up getting it stuck. And if they don't advance the pawn, then we're just going to end up repeating. Um, if they tried, here's the little graph down here. If they tried to check, we would just go up in front of the pawn. And if they tried to check again, we would just come back. And they can't bring their king because our rook was over there. We could make a mistake, as we saw, and let that pawn through. But if we're careful, if we've studied this and practiced it, which I am going to, we can draw in the Philidor position. We have to remember what that is. Especially if I go back to look at that endgame book, I'm going to have to remember that the Philidor is the one that I can draw if I'm defending. And that's the one with the rook on the third, and their pawn and king haven't reached there yet. And if I, with the Lucena position, I can't draw. I'm going to lose if the other player is the one with the pawn. Or that I can definitely win if I'm the player with the pawn, but it's going to be difficult. We just looked at this for, what, 15 minutes, and it was difficult to find a way to get that pawn through there. And it looked like in a lot of cases there was about to be a repetition of positions or a repetition of moves, which would be a repetition of positions that would have been a draw by repetition. Um... But we, have, I, we eventually got to a position where we could promote the pawn and force the opponent to give away their rook for it. And then we had to know how to win the rook end game with just uh, checkmating with the lone rook, which is difficult. Some uh, Many people at just below my level still haven't learned that. I ran into someone the other day that had a hard time checking me with just a queen. And so, and, the, and I'm at 1300. I, that was actually the, that was in a bullet game though, so lower in that, you know, lower than 800. But I still had somebody that had had trouble checkmating me with just a, a queen. It took a while. So anyway, these are well-known positions according to chess masters and chess teachers in the books that I'm reading, and um, discovered in the 1600s, 1700s, one and the other and studied by all in court and according to these writers these chess experts these are the most important position the lucena is the most important position in end game theory and the philidor was listed as uh well together the lucena and philidor are the most important positions in this type of end game and in end game theory um, so if you don't know these yet they're definitely worth studying certainly the grandmasters think we should i've probably reached these positions by accident and didn't realize that that's what it was and uh in that case i might have drawn one of these games that i should have won or i might have lost one of the ones that i should have drawn like if i was the defender in a philidor position i should have drawn it but i didn't know that's what the position that i was in somewhere they found a statistic here on the lucena position page it said according to uh According to De La Villa, rook and pawn end games occur in 8 to 10% of all games. I'm assuming they're talking about master level rated games, because certainly I don't think that's true in, in my level of games online. But um, it says 8 to 10% of all games would end up in a rook and pawn end game. And they may simplify to the Lucena position. 
So yeah, definitely if you have the pawn, you want to get to the Lucena position, and if you have the don't have the pawn, you want to get to the Philidor position. Thank you for watching. I'm going to keep studying these. I'm going to come back to them on my own time, and uh, we're going to figure this out. We'll see you next time.